So today I can report there are 41 new positive cases of COVID-19 in the community. So our total number of confirmed cases associated with the Auckland community outbreak is 148. Of those cases, 38 are in Auckland and three are in Wellington. All three in Wellington are known close contacts of existing cases. These uh, cases in Wellington were actually first identified uh, two evenings ago, but only appear in our numbers today. Uh, all cases are being transferred or have been transferred to a quarantine facility. So of our total cases, 137 are in Auckland and 11 in Wellington. No cases anywhere else around the motu, including in Coromandel. Uh, 89 have been ep epidemiologically linked so far to the Auckland outbreak. The un um, uh, remaining 59 are still to confirm an epidemiological link, but for the vast majority, it's already clear that they either ha are a household or other close contact, or they were at a location, location of interest. We'll have more information on that later in the day. There are eight COVID-19 positive patients associated with our current community outbreak who are in hospital. Uh, none are in ICU, all are in negative uh, pressure ventilation rooms in the three hospitals across the Auckland region. With our latest cluster, we do know what actions will slow the spread of the virus and we expect to see that slowing will begin to happen during this week. So each identified case is asked about where they have been during their infectious period and from later today we are wanting to start to uh, put up information as up to date as possible about how many of these cases may have been out and about during their infectious period as we move beyond the first week in alert level four. The majority of cases in the outbreak are now of Samoan ethnicity and in large part that's a reflection of the largest subcluster, which is one centred around the Assembly of God Church in Mangere, which has approximately 58 cases, or to date 58 cases linked to it. The number of contacts continues to increase. As of 9am today, there were 15,741 uh, contacts who have been formally identified. Most of those are classified as close contacts. For comparison, at this point in the outbreak in August last year in Auckland, there were around 1,500 close contacts, so more than 10 times the number of close contacts identified. On locations of interest, uh, since the last update, there's an additional 100 locations of interest and now over 400 across the motu. So I do again encourage people to continually check the ministry's website. There is obviously the functionality with the map and the ability to search. Now last evening I spoke with my counterpart in Australia, the Department of Health Secretary, Professor Brendan Murphy, and it struck me, he remarked during that conversation, that combating Delta in the community is like dealing with a whole new virus. Uh, that is our experience in New Zealand too. Delta is unlike our previous experience. It is, as we know, highly infectious and transmissible and, as we have seen, spreads rapidly. This reinforces just how critical it is that people do follow the Level 4 rules, staying at home, only leaving the house for essential reasons like getting a test or a vaccination, going to the doctor, pharmacy or supermarket, exercising safely close to home or going to work if you're an essential worker. If you have been in contact with someone who is infectious with COVID-19, you will be given more detailed advice by Healthline or public health officials on what that means for you. In some cases, if there's been a high risk of infection, it means everyone in the household must stay home and not leave the house until the person receives a negative test at day five. This means staying home by everybody, full stop. There is support available if people need uh, food or other essential services, and that can be um, achieved by, if you haven't already been referred, by calling the, social, uh, um, the Ministry of Social Development phone number 0800 559 009, or calling Healthline who will refer you. Testing remains a priority, and yesterday there were 35,376 tests processed across the country. To everyone who's turned out to be tested, thank you very much. The waits are getting less, certainly in Auckland, with primary care back doing a large number of tests. The waits were much lower around the uh, community testing centres, of which there are now 22 across the Auckland region. 26,500 of the swabs taken yesterday were across Tamaki Makaurau. In Wellington, there were around 2,500 tests yes, uh, processed yesterday, and there are 11 community testing centres open again today, as well as primary care general practice doing testing. 
When you go for a test, please do try and take your NHI number with you. That will be on a hospital letter, or you may have it already loaded on the app. Uh, but you can also use the Ministry's 0800 number to find that out, 0800 855 066. Yesterday was our best day ever for vaccinations and the first time that we've had more than 60,000 in a day. In fact, 63,333. This is a tremendous result and an incredible effort by our vaccinators working under level four conditions. Uh, as, the, as Dr Bloomfield's indicated, um, we do have a wide range of supports available to people uh, to be able to deal with COVID-19. And I just want to speak briefly about those now. The first one I want to mention is the Leave Support Scheme. This is a scheme that is available for employers, including the self-employed, to help play employees who need to self-isolate and cannot work from home. Uh, this support is paid as a lump sum for a two-week period of $600 per week for full-time workers and $359 a week for part-time workers. It is important that employers and employees work together to make sure they're making use of the Leave Support Scheme. We also have the short-term absence payment. This is available for businesses, including self-employed people, to help pay workers who cannot work for home while they wait, wait for a COVID-19 test result. Again, this is played at the same rates as, uh, as the other schemes of $600 um, for, for a full-time worker and $359 for each uh, part-time worker. I would, would advise anyone who is in a situation where they are required to work, uh, they cannot work from home, and they are required to be at home for self-isolation purposes to be talking to their employer about those schemes. They are very important. In addition to that, at 8am this morning, the resurgent support payment scheme kicked in across the country. Alongside the wage subsidy, which came into effect on Friday, the resurgence payment helps and supports businesses affected by New Zealand's move to alert level four. Both schemes are designed to offer some certainty in what is a very uncertain time. The resurgence payment is available nationally to any business or organisation that has experienced a 30% or greater drop in revenue or a 30% decline in capital raising ability over a seven day period due to the alert level increase. This payment can help with things like rent or fixed costs and you can apply whether you're a business or self-employed. It's paid at a flat rate of $1,500 per business and then $400 per full-time equivalent employee up to 50 full-time equivalent employees. This means the maximum amount payable under the scheme, which is a one-off payment, is $21,000. We urge anyone who thinks they may be eligible to go onto the Inland Revenue website and find out more. And I can say that as of uh, the first four or so hours of operation of the scheme today, 26,000 applications have been made for that payment. In addition, we also have the wage subsidy scheme. This came into effect on Friday, and we've had processed 127,935 applications, totaling just over $484 million that has already been paid out to businesses to support them to retain their workforce. <coughs> MSD generally aims to process an application in three working days, but managed to get some payments out the door on the very day the scheme opened. And I want to acknowledge again the hard work of the Ministry of Social Development staff in processing so many applications in such a short period of time. The vast majority of applicants so far are sole traders or small businesses rather than big companies. Just over 72% of employees covered by the wage subsidy are employed by businesses with between 1 and 19 staff members. Nearly 10% of total applicants following the March 2020 lockdown were companies with 1,000 plus employees. And while it's early days, I can say that at this point we only have one employer with over 500 workers who has applied for the scheme. To all businesses, I want to say today thank you for how you are adapting to the lockdown and adjusting your systems. There is a lot of resilience that has been built up in the New Zealand economy. Rest assured, we are here for you if you need us to support you. I recognise that a semblance of normality is not the case for many businesses or workers right now. Anyone operating in the hospitality or tourism sectors has been hit hard by this lockdown as they have previous ones. 
we are paying out the wage subsidy and the resurgence support payments to support just these types of businesses, and we do encourage those businesses to tap into this scheme. As I've said many times before, for every business in New Zealand, no matter what type, size or location, a strong public health response is still the best economic response. And it is worth remembering the strong position we're in going into this outbreak because of that approach. By the September quarter last year, New Zealand's economic activity had already risen above pre-COVID levels, and we were one of only four economies to rebound so quickly. By the middle of this year, our unemployment rate was down to 4%, lower than when we actually went in to lockdown in 2020. And the economy overall has been performing more strongly than before COVID reached our shores. So I want to end by saying a huge thank you to everybody who has made that happen. Everybody is playing their part in New Zealand in this challenging time, but I want to acknowledge today one group in particular, the staff in our managed isolation and quarantine facilities. There are more than 4,500 people working 24 hours a day, seven days a week at these facilities, which are not the easiest nor the most usual of workplaces. They are the people who work to protect us from COVID-19, and they've not only supported more than 164,000 people to re-enter New Zealand, but they're now also supporting those who've tested positive in this current outbreak and been moved into quarantine. To everyone working in MIQ, whether it's the hotel workers, bus drivers, security staff, health practitioners, police or defence force, you are doing a great job and it is much appreciated by all New Zealanders.